Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Today we're going to do a quick review of 7.4 to 7.6. I feel like there's so much information, it's good to take a second and step back and review a little bit. So in section 7.4, we talked about inscribed angles. And remember, inscribed angles have their vertex right on the circle. Like, for instance, right here, angle QRS, this angle right here is an inscribed angle. The main thing that we learned is the angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So if this arc out here is 100 degrees, angle R is 50. Remember, the inscribed angle is half of the arc. And so, for instance, on the next one, look at angle G. Angle G opens up to this arc. Let me highlight it here. Angle G opens up to this arc down here. Well, that's a semicircle, and a semicircle is 180, and so angle G is half of 180. 180 divided by 2, of course, is 90, so angle G is 90. And then the third thing we learned in this unit in section 7.4 was that if you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, like this third picture here, opposite angles are supplementary. A lot of people think they're going to be equal, but they're not. They add up to 180. So for instance, if angle K is 100 degrees, then angle A is 80 degrees. They are supplementary. Same with angle L and N. Let me get a different color. Let's say um, angle L is, uh, I don't know, 85 degrees. Then if you do 180 minus 85, you get 95. So N would have to be 95. Opposite angles add up to 180. In section 7.5, we learned about tangents. And remember, a tangent is a line that kind of skims by a circle and touches it in just one point. So that point um, where the line touches the circle, that's called the point of tangency, and the line is called the tangent. And that um, radius that comes out to that point will be perpendicular to the line. So they'll meet at 90 degrees. Also, if, if uh, you have two tangents that start from the same exterior point, so like, for instance, let's say BA only touches the circle in one po point and BC only touches the circle in one point. If that happens, they will be equal to each other. They will be congruent. And so on that third picture, just remember, like if you have a point out here, here we have a quadrilateral circumscribed about the circle. That means this side, is, this side right here is going to skim by and touch the circle in one spot. This side right here is going to skim by and touch the circle in one spot. So what happens is these two lengths have to be the same because this is a tangent and this is a tangent, and they start from that same exterior point. So keep that in mind as well. And finally, in section 7.6, we learned what secants are. Secants are lines that intersect a circle in two places. And then think about if you had to find out how big is this angle x. We'll see these secants, they cross inside the circle, but not at the center. Let's just call this arc over here, you know, right over here, this arc y, and then this arc over here, let's call that z. So if we wanted to find the value of x, or how big angle x is, remember, x is going to be equal to adding the arcs and dividing by 2. It's not at the center of the circle. So you add the arcs and divide by 2. If you go to the next picture, on the next picture, this vertex is right on the circle. So even though this angle is partially in the circle and partially outside the circle, that angle will be half of the arc it opens up to. So you can see it opens up right here. So this is your arc. Let's say that arc is 100 degrees. Well, then angle 1 would be 50. It's going to be half of the arc it opens up to when it's right on the circle. And then the third situation is what if you have an angle like angle A that you want to find? Well, it's not even in the circle or on the circle. So when that happens, you're going to subtract. You're going to subtract the big arc minus the little arc and divide by 2. So let's go to the next slide and we're going to try a few of these. Please pause the video and try numbers 1, 2, and 3. 
Number one, all the way around a circle is 360 degrees. So start by finding the arc that opens up over here. Start by finding this arc by doing 360 minus 100 and you get two, 260. So this arc is 260. This angle right here, it's right on the circle. The vertex is on the circle. So to find that angle, you're just going to take 260 and divide by 2. 130 should have been your answer. For number 2, this angle is outside of the circle. So you should take big arc minus little arc and divide by 2. So it's going to be x equals 146 minus 44, divide by 2. And I think that is 51 degrees. And then last but not least, this third one, they cross inside the circle. These two secants or chords that cross inside the circle. So when that happens, you're supposed to add the arcs and divide by 2 to get the angle. So if I think about adding the arcs, I'm going to add x plus 86. Those are the two arcs. I'm going to divide by 2, and it should equal the angle. So it should equal 51. To solve this, I'm going to start by multiplying by 2. That's going to get rid of that fraction. So on the left here, I'll have x plus 86. On the right, I'll have 102. And then subtract 86 and 102 minus 86 is 16. So x is going to be 16 degrees. So this would be 16. And you could check it. You could add, add 86 and 16 and divide by 2 and see if you get 51. In the circle shown, chords TR and QS intersect at P, which is the center of the circle. And the measure of angle PST is 30 degrees. So all of that is pretty much shown on the picture. So the big question is, what is the degree measure of the minor arc RS? In other words, find this. Find RS over here. Please pause the video and give it a try. So one thing, if P is at the center, all of these are radii of the circle, and they will all be the same length. And so I want you to think about this triangle down here. It ends up being an isosceles triangle with two sides equal. And if two sides are equal, there will also be two angles equal. So this angle down here will be a 30 degree angle. Next, look at that 30 degree angle. See how it opens up to the arc that we're looking for? Well, this angle is right on the circle. It's an inscribed angle. So to find the measure of arc RS, you're just going to take 30 and you're going to double it. Answer should be 60 degrees. Wang's Kitchen will deliver if you live within a 10 mile radius of the store. Kenzie lives six miles east and seven miles north of the store. Will she get delivery? Okay, so what I thought might be helpful is to graph this, but you have to know your directions. So remember, never eat soggy waffles, north, south, east, west. Um, and let's just say Wang's Kitchen is right there at the center, okay? And Kenzie lives six miles east, seven miles north. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to be right up here, I think. Six to the east and seven north. And we want to figure out, will she get free delivery? And so what we really need to do is we need to figure out if she's within um, a 10-mile radius of that store. We need to find this distance. So there's a couple ways to do it, but one really quick way to do it is to think about this is 6, this is 7, and this makes a right angle. Could we just do Pythagorean theorem to find that third distance? Yes, we sure could. So 6 squared plus 7 squared should equal that distance squared. So we have 36 plus 49. 36 plus 49 is 
85. And then if we take the square root, we get 9.21, nope, 9.22 miles. Is she within a 10 mile radius of the store? Yes, she will get free delivery. So if you wanted to draw like what the delivery area would look like, what you would wanna do is start at the center and count out 10. So that'd be like here, 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 and here. And if you had a compass, you could connect those points. And I think what it would look like is something like this. I don't have a compass, I'm just freehanding it. But that place where Kenzie lives, which is out here at the blue dot, would barely be inside of that circular area of delivery for Wang's Kitchen. Okay, I know that was a quick review, but now please try worksheet 7.4 to 7.6. Let me know if you have questions.